said came true. Find the book. Check it out. Um, so, yes, sugar is um, one of my many yeah. on the hit list. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, which goes right into the next <coughs> category. When I lived here, cancer was ranked as 23 in risks of death. Now it's what? I don't know. Hi. Number one, it says here. Oh, it's one out of two. Number one. It, it surpassed really? wow. cardio. It surpassed heart disease wow. last year. It's number one. Wow. So what's changed? Sugar. Every toxin. Everything. Everything. Chemicals. Sugar. I mean, cancer is a cultural disease. It's voluntary. These are, these are the words you have to hear because you're getting a whole different message. Well, I don't know, you know, there's, there's got to be a genetic link here somewhere. Well, there are genetics involved, but what influences the genetics? Genetics influence 20%. 80% is up to you. Okay. Um, and, and still, you know, the number one killer of you know, cancer is breast cancer in women, prostate cancer in men, but people forget that the combination is still lung cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that kind of brings up another pet peeve of mine, the, the cigarettes. Who told young kids they could smoke? I mean, I thought we all figured it out. What happened? It, it had a resurgence, mm -hmm. and it shocks me, you know, when I walk out of the airport and I'm like, People still smoke, and they're young people, you know, and, it, and it's upsetting you know, because of 400 toxins, you know, that they're pulling into their body with every cigarette. Okay. All right. And, you know, on the meta studies, when you look at effectiveness of cancer and radiation, statistically, it's 2% effective. It's two percent effective. Uh, what? Uh, chemo and uh, radiation. Chemo and radiation. Oh. <coughs> yep. Yes. That's horrible. Yes. What about the anti-estrogen drugs they want to give you for breast cancer? Is that been right? Well, there you're talking about the tamoxifen. Or you know, yeah. you're, if it's an estrogen-driven cancer, then yes, they, they determined that the, you know tamoxifen is to stop your body's ability to make estrogen. So yeah, that's not a, a chemo or a radiation, it is a different treatment. Okay, and you know, diabetes. Like I said, Sugar Blues predicted it, and we do have an epic. One in seven people now will get type two diabetes. And now we see children getting type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. And the New, New England report, you know, three years ago said that this generation Will no longer outlive their parents. We're on a decline. You know, it's we're we're degressing. You know, we're de-evolving. Yes. Um, autism back in the day was one in ten thousand. Right. Now it's one in a hundred. That's a hundred-fold increase in autism and Alzheimer's. A hundred-fold increase. Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's? All, both of them. Autism and Alzheimer's are both. So here we are. <coughs> the U.S., we're ranked 23rd in quality of health care. Now, in contrast to we pay the most for it. So, you know, there's, there's a disconnect there. The most expensive care of care, but yet we're ranked 23rd. Starbucks pays more in health care than they do in coffee. Well, Chevrolet pays more in health care than they do in steel. And I, I hate saying this, but I've heard it quoted enough um, that if we allowed cancer to be cured, it would bankrupt the country. Say that again. If we allowed cancer to be cured, 
we would bankrupt the country. It's a big money maker. This year's flu virus, they admitted they missed the Again? primary flu, but okay. get it anyway, they said. <laughs> just, really. Just so you can get the adjuvants and the formaldehyde and the aborted fetal tissue? I mean, is that the reason? Yeah. And this year also the CDC admitted that they um, did not disclose data that vaccines do cause autism. Yeah, they do. Say that again. Say. This year, the CDC admitted that they did not disclose the information that vaccines do cause autism. Yeah. They did not. They, they, admitted they, they, they admitted that they just did not disclose the information. They know all this time yes, that it does cause autism. Mm -hmm. Now, I will I'll tell you. The doctors haven't read their CDC's report. Yes. Now, the primary is the MMR. And what they have found, and now that you know the gut ecology, that the measles virus begins to replicate in the gut, what? Punching holes in the gut, causing this whole you know, toxification of the body, and there, it hits the kids that genetically don't have methylation. So all you need is a, enough of attack, enough you know, of these things coming together for you know a child who can't methylate for it to affect their brain. Can you plan for any of that out of your kids? Any of the shots? Mm -hmm. Yes. There are yes. some methods to clear that now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can do it, you know, nutrition wise, homeopathy. There's several different techniques to work on, you know, vaccinations. Mm -hmm. And you so know there's hope. Yes, there's hope. There is. And, you know, the another statistic that no one likes to talk about is that medical mistakes and drug interactions cause more deaths than cancer and cardiovascular disease together. So, again, why it's so important on those drug interactions is because of all of the inducing and inhibiting that goes on. Because we're, we're talking about, you know, an, 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 you know an, an interruption in your biochemistry that um, has a, a terrible side effect. Okay. <coughs> and we already talked about the NSAIDs here. Each year, um, kill more people than the AIDS epidemic did. Mm -hmm. And I already mentioned that acetaminophen was the number one reason for liver failure. So, in conclusion, we see that it's gut issues that are at the heart of all of the autoimmune diseases, the thyroiditis, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, dementia, food allergies, acne, psoriasis, eczema, PMS, PCOS, IBS, mental illness, leaky gut is the primary source of inflammation, and inflammation is the root of all illness. The brain is the most sensitive to inflammation and results in headaches, memory loss, Alzheimer's, behavior and mood changes. So that is enough reason, you know, for you all to be on the bandwagon for ending at least your leaky gut or being checked for it. And there are different ways. You can generally just know by symptoms. You know, and pretty much any symptom that you can think of is going to have uh, an effect from leaky gut. So um, my best recommendation is, and this is what I plan to be starting in January, is what I call the Boot Camp of Nutrition, is a cleanse program. Now, when you say cleanse program, you don't just decide to do a cleanse. <laughs> like, you don't just decide to run a marathon tomorrow. <laughs> so it takes thought, it takes preparation, and it takes budgeting. Um, and this is why I'm informing people before Christmas and gifts and oh. and credit card debt. Smart. Because this is the best thing you can do for yourself. And you need to give yourself at least the option to consider it. And a marathon is not for everybody. 
but maybe a half marathon, maybe a 10K, maybe a 5K. Maybe you could just walk around the block with me on this. Anything you do is going to help you. And some people, when they can either, you know, they see the, the swimming pool, they will dive right in. Some people need to just get their toes wet, and then they go a little further. It's okay. Everybody's a little bit different. Okay? So it's um, on the back of the program, I've kind of listed the qualifications or, or the, the expectations. You can qualify yourself. Yes, this is what it would mean to run the marathon. <coughs> but again, you can't do the half, then you can do a half marathon or a quarter, a quarter marathon. You have to decide what you can commit to for yourself. Um, I like to look at your most recent blood results. I want to know, are you healthy enough to do a cleanse? If you are a walking time bomb for a heart attack, you're not dying on my watch. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I want to make sure, you know, your liver enzymes, that you're not in liver failure. Okay? Or that your... Um, you know, A1C is not off the roof. Or, you know, I, there's just basic things that need to be checked to make sure it, it's safe. Um, I, re I like to have a medical narrative. And that is, and if you, even if, do this for yourself, but write down your life story on your health. Everything that's happened to you. Um, everything you remember. Because there may be a time you can't remember. That's one point. The other is it's so nice to get it all on paper to put in front of someone so that they can put, connect the dots and put the pieces together. And I, I will tell you, um, most of the, the folks that you know, my, my husband and I see, they've typically been anywhere from 5 to 20 doctors. They carry around their medical records with a suitcase and their supplements with a suitcase. And what I have found is that Few practitioners took the time to go through those records to see what was really going on. And when, you know, I would do that, I would find things that that was the core of the issue. You know, for instance, if a woman comes in and she's on bioidentical hormones, you know, most practitioners will just, okay, well, we'll keep you on that and we'll just keep on going. And, you know, this particular woman, no one checked back far enough to see that her liver issue started when she started on bioidentical hormones. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, voila. We put her on a natural hormone replacement, and her liver enzymes got better. Simple stuff, but it takes a health investigator, that's what I call myself, that someone that will take the time to go through and make sure um, that they understand the history. Because everything, your body never forgets an insult. Everything adds up to what you are feeling and experiencing today. So, again, it, it is, it's forensics. Mm -hmm. I like to take the blood, tests, the history. If you've got hair analysis, if you've got neurotransmitter testing, there's a maraud of things out there that people do. But if it's all put together, many times it points to the same direction. And then you know for sure that's the direction you want to take. Um, and everybody has paperwork to be signed to. You know, I'm very transparent. I even, you know, my prices. And this is like a work order. You fill this out, and then I do it. So, um, uh, time commitment. Again, you know, if you're running a marathon, you start about a year early. You start with, you know, sometimes you get a trainer. You join the gym. You change your diet. You know, there's a time commitment, there's a, a cost commitment. You know, you just know these things up front. I like people to get a blood, a buddy, a cleanse buddy, or a, a PDC, purification, detoxification, cleanse buddy. Same reason gyms work. You know, people encourage you. And, you know, you can walk two miles talking with someone, and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even know I walked that far. You know, that's the power of a buddy. And I can tell you again, food is an emotional thing. You know, this is you know, a detoxification. When you start removing these things from the diet, 
many people have side effects. That gut-brain connection, I've had people hallucinate without their coffee, you know? So, you know, it's, it's just a fact. You know, and, and there are things, you know, I find out about people, they have sometimes very strange attachments to things. And that's fine. I don't care what you're addicted to. It's just, we, you know, don't try to cold turkey, whatever that is, when you start a cleanse. Let's work up to it. Let me give you a chance to give you some alternatives. You know, even, you know, heroin addicts have how, you know, Let's take it easy. There are coffee substitutes. There are ice cream substitutes. There are soda substitutes. You know, let me give you a you know a taste bud alternative program so that it's not so traumatic for you. Um, and yes, I remember I used to hear that um, often the things you're addicted to are the things that you're allergic to. Is that true? Yes, and you see that very commonly in children. You know, that moms will come in, and first of all, I'm always here with me, you won't eat anything but chicken nuggets. Who's the mom? <laughs> <laughs> Who buys it? You know, but yeah, the, the kids will, their favorite foods is, you know, the, the flour, the cookies, the crackers, the animal crackers, you know, the milk. I mean, it's, it's those, and all of the convenience products that are all made out of those or a combination, and yes, that's all the kids eat. So, and what's fascinating about children is they're, they don't know enough to fake a system or a symptom or to exaggerate a story about themselves. So it's very easy to see a food sensitivity. You have them write their name, eat the food, and write their name again, and it's all over the place. You know, their behavior um, and even you can see some flushing of the, the face, the ears, the eyes from these food sensitivities. If you watch them uh, and you know, observe them, you know, especially in a classroom, so many of these kids are medicated because mm -hmm. their behavior is off the chart. In Dallas-Fort Worth area, 60% of the kids in the public schools are medicated. Oh, there is a line down the hallway to the nurse's station oh to dole out their drugs. And this is considered normal behavior. Wow. They wonder why you're not medicated. You know, so it's it's coming. The success is in the planning. You can make a cleanse easy on yourself if you plan ahead. You check out exercise programs, relaxation techniques, different recipes beforehand. Don't surprise yourself and get hungry and then go to McDonald's and call me and say, I'm a failure. I can't do this <laughs> so you, you have to plan ahead. And the more you pre-cook the items, pre-package, pre-proportion these things, you breeze through this, and this is like a vacation for your body because you're letting all of these, you know, phase one and phase two have a rest for the first time in your life, and, it, you know, your body will thank you. <laughs> and there's a skill proficiency, too. I mean, you know, to make shakes. Now, yes, I am a drill sergeant, and <laughs> I think it's wonderful for some of these companies to provide different flavors. They usually have chocolate, vanilla, some have chai. I've got some to taste back there. Do I care if you like the way they taste? No. <laughs> if it was mud and gravel and did all this stuff, you're going to eat it. <laughs> so, but, but they're nice, and there are some ideas that you could do to make these shakes taste good. And I'm happy to share the things I've heard. <laughs> with you, okay, but there's a proficiency in, now these, you can try it with water, which I think, it's tolerable, some people actually like it, but it's just water, and sometimes when you're in a hurry, that's all the time you have, water, shake, shake, drink, 
There's no excuse. Oh, I can't do this. It takes too much time. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't. Okay. Sorry, I keep crossing my eyes. I just <laughs> my memories of actual people to say these things to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. And eating ability things. to make meals without all this junk. You know, I can help you. I have a list of alternative foods. I can show you, you know, there's some things I've, I've listed there. Even Costco is coming up with some wonderful mm -hmm. organic, easy, already pre-cooked food. Mm -hmm. Again, I, we can take all the excuses out. You come up with it, I will tell you how to get over it. Okay. <laughs> um, and you have to be a problem solver and a troubleshooter. If you get constipated, you have to call me and tell me, or I don't have a chance to tell you what to do about it. Okay. If uh, I had one woman who failed to tell me she was on five necks in a day and had projectile vomiting when she cold turkey, you need oh. to call me so I can oh. tell you what to do instead of going to the emergency room. You know, so the communication is very important. I can't help you unless you tell me what's going on. And again, breaking the bad habits in advance, any dependencies, coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, diet sodas, television addictions. You know, um, avoiding alcohol products. Um, again, we're, we're trying to give our phase one, phase two a rest, <coughs> some relaxation. So we don't want to be introducing anything that's going to stimulate these enzymes to inhibit or to um, induce them. Now, but what about decaf? Well, it's not caffeine per se. Yes, it, caffeine is a problem, but there's another chemical called theobromin. Another, you know, chemical in the coffee, and it tears down the adrenals. Mm -hmm. We're trying to build the adrenals up. Now, not everybody is affected by coffee because some people have stronger adrenals. They didn't do what you did in college. They didn't live the way you live. Okay, so they have adrenals left. Ad and adrenals, ad renal, ad is above, renal is kidney. They're little walnut-shaped glands mm -hmm. that sit right above the kidneys, and they are powerhouses for your stress hormones and epinephrine and norepinephrine and DHEA. So, you know, be nice to them. Um, don't talk cold turkey any prescriptions. We talked okay. about that. Uh, purchase products outside the program handicaps my um, recommendations and ability to guide you. I, I know a lot of products. I don't know all the products. So I can't warn you about things I don't know about. The diet is dairy, gluten-free, and expect your taste buds to change. So, of course, you're going to be eliminating. So, if you haven't gone on to the, the journey of milk alternatives, you know, then I can give you a little tour. I, in Dallas, I'm sorry, we've got um, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Central Market, um, Sprouts. Oh. <coughs> Quit gloating. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere, and, you know. So, but even that, people come to me and say, "I'm I'm intimidated going into any of those. It's like going into a foreign country." So I would do mm. shopping tours, and you know, sh explain to them why Whole Foods has five different grades of beef. You know, and the A, B, C, D. It's it's how much range fed or you know feedlot fed you want, and they just spell it out, and then you pick. Or they have conventional, they have transitional, they have organic. You know, so that was all foreign to a lot of people, even in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So, you know, just getting people used to the different terminology, the different way of cooking. And, it, you know, for most people, you know, the standard American diet, S-A-D, it, yeah. it means that you have to relearn everything. Uh, how to shop, how to cook, you know, how to prepare the food, how to eat it. You know, and there's... You know, different way, you know, don't mix fruit with anything that you eat. You know, the whole food combining thing, all of that's very important. So, what I'm saying is, you can't decide to run a marathon tomorrow. There are some things for you to know, some training, and that's, you know, I'm going to coach, I'm going to train. You go through classes, use it, whatever it takes to get this information so that when it's time to do a marathon, <coughs> you're ready, you're trained, you know got your coach. Everything is ready to go. Okay. Drinking water, you know, very important. Um, if you take your body weight, 
divided by two, that's how many ounces of water you should be drinking. Most people will say, oh my God, that is a lot of water. Because you know, they're not used to drinking that much water. So everyone should be in the habit of just packing it around like a camel everywhere you go. <laughs> not water. So it's reminding you to drink water. And preferably filtered water. And avoiding foods that contain yeast, um, sugars, cheeses, and all of those have yeast. And, and part of the reason for that, it's not just the yeast, but fermented foods also have high histamines in it. Remember, histamine is one of those things that punches holes in the gut. And there are some people <coughs> that do not produce the enzyme that breaks down histamine in the gut. And those people tend to be the, the, the ones that suffer the most as far as food sensitivities. It could be a histamine problem. And there is a way to check for that. There is a, a functional test for that. Um, fermented foods, even things like sauerkraut? or Yes, anything oh. fermented. Just And again, it's just for that period of time. Okay. Um, most people, I, I say that, I'm saying it's just for now, not forever. Just to make you feel good, because <laughs> if you go into deprivation mode, it's, oh, woe is me. She's taking away all the food I love. Right. right. I'll never be the same. You know, and, you know, that's not what I want to do. Every negative thought, we're going to give you five foods that you can't eat. And you're just going to focus on all the good things you can do. And then hopefully, you never want to do those because you feel so good that your taste buds will change. And when you do drink a soda, you want to spit it out. So yeah. nasty. Yeah. That's the goal. And if you fall off the wagon, you call me. <laughs> and you give me the option to give you some ideas. You know, because I, you know, I've been around the block a few times on these cleanses. I've had people cleanse and went on a cruise. Yes, you can still do this cleanse and go on a cruise. You can do this cleanse and you can go hiking. You know, I wouldn't recommend it. But I know people that have done it and they made it. But make it easy on yourself. Don't schedule anything during your cleanse. Try to give your time, you know, that time is your, you know, your little vacation for your liver. You know, yeah. that you put your liver on vacation. You owe it to yourself to extend your life and add quality because this will be again. This is the difference to me between sickness and health. Yes? So, I'm completely sold. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, the, the word cleanse, how does all this compare or differ to all the things you've been hearing become popular through time, where you just go to the health food store and buy a cleanse? Okay. Are yes. those similar? Or are they completely different? I realize this is like yes. the whole meal deal. But what are those things? Good question. That's why I call it the, the PDC, Purification, Detoxification, Cleanse, because everyone has a different connotation in their mind about what that means. Most of it's bad. Most of it is, I bought this stuff at the health food store and I spent the whole week in, in the bathroom. Yeah. That's most people's experience of a cleanse. So I don't want to just say cleanse because they're like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Okay. If, you know, but no, this is designed so that you can keep working, you can keep exercising, that you can do everything that you normally do and still get all the benefits. You don't have to fly to Austria or go to the Tibet and sit on a mountain. You can do it in Lewiston. <coughs> but what are those things? Are they just like pieces of this or just wrong versions well, of this? Well, or? generally it's um, some very powerful Chinese herbs. Oh that okay. are bowel cleansers only. Oh, and okay. their idea of cleansing is just the loop. Oh, okay. They're gonna flush. Okay. And that's, that's right. you might get rid of that, but what about <coughs> all the rest okay. of the GI tract that needs help and okay. replenishing and balancing? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I love that analogy of cars. You know, and, and I do I that was a good reminder because people don't appreciate this temple, this vehicle that they have, okay? It is a Maserati, it's a Ferrari, it's a Jaguar, it's a BMW, whatever your 
green car is, that's what you're driving around, that you pull up and you say, um, you know, I'll, I'll, what's in that can there? Oh, that gas, someone dropped it off. I think they siphoned it out of old tractor. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> Put that in the car. So that's what you're doing to this beautiful, you know, race car is putting <coughs> junk in there that's right. gumming up the engine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, see yourself for what you are in this and and give yourself, you know, the gift, you know, of cleaning everything out and living your life appreciating, you know, that gift. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the information. My, my plan is uh, those who want to do a group cleanse, you know, to run a marathon, 